Hello and welcome to my channel, I went to lose gaming. Let's see if the new 4 star DPS catalyst user, Yan Fei, can compete with two of the current top tier pyro DPS characters. So before abusing the local fauna in Teyvat, let's familiarize ourselves with the contestants. As usual in my videos, I will be using maximized damage numbers. I wrote an algorithm that shuffles around artifact stats and substats until the optimal combination is reached to maximize a specific source of damage with a specific weapon and artifact set equipped. They are all at constellation 6 and will all be using their arguably best in slot 5 star weapons all at refinement 5. The Wolf's Gravestone for Deluke and the Lost Prayer for Klee and Yan Fei. Let's start off with our DPS gold standard, Deluke. Without Pyro Resonance or any other party benefits, my Deluke's damage potential is at 75%. One important thing to note is that even though on paper, Deluke's damage potential is a bit lower than the other two, this is largely because of the lack of a crit rate or crit damage substat weapon. When a character doesn't have a crit substat weapon, it's harder for them to reach their maximum damage potential. I maximize his basic attack. As you can see, all of his talents are pretty well leveled. And despite his burst being just one level lower, that will barely have any effect on on his overall damage potential. Next let's take a look at our favorite lawyer, Yan Fei. It's super important to note that the new world boss, Angry Giant Rock Frog, was just released. And as such, I have very few boss materials to level Yan Fei's talents up. My Yan Fei's talent levels are quite low, at a paltry 799. Remember that constellations 3 and 5 add 3 levels to her skill and burst. Now with Child in the party and with another Pyro character in the party, this brings her charge attack damage potential to 80.26%. However, her damage potential for her burst and her skill are at a paltry 64% each. I would estimate that her burst and skill make up around 20% of her damage output. After weighting them accordingly, my Yanfei's damage potential is around 77% with Child and another Pyro in the party. Now for Klee. I actually crowned Klee's basic attack way back in the day. It was the first thing I ever crowned. Her talents are at 10, 12, 12, and her damage potential is around 79% with these stats. Klee is my overall best build character, but without Pyro Resonance or other party buffs, Klee's damage potential is still pretty darn close to the other two. And next, I want to talk about Deluxe Dragon Strike tech. Let's see how it does in comparison to regular Constellation 6 Deluxe. <laughs> In this very short window against Cryo Regisvine, Dragon Strike Deluke did quite a bit better than Constellation 6 Deluke, essentially making Constellation 6 worthless if you can Dragon Strike well. Unfortunately, for this video, I've decided against using Dragon Strike. This is for both the interest of time and pragmatism. Let's be real, how many Deluke players are Dragon Striking all the time? And also, it's worth noting that in order to Dragon Strike consistently, it can be quite restrictive on team building because I can't Dragon Strike at all without a movement speed bonus. As such, I will just be using normal Deluke Constellation 6. And finally, you might have noticed that this video is missing someone. Yeah, it's missing Amber. Amber would just completely flatten the competition. The gliding champion of Mondstadt's insane pyro DPS would completely engulf the competition in an inferno of exploding bunnies. As such, Amber is banned from this competition, since we all know how she'll trivialize this entire video. This is a joke by the way, I do not think Amber is a better pyro DPS than Klee, Yanfei, and Deluke. Hu Tao is the actual character that would trivialize most of the stuff in this entire video. With all the snooze inducing numbers and caveats out of the way, we can finally start abusing our volunteers. Starting with our favorite volunteer, the Cryo Regisvine. As usual, our plant friend has such little HP it evaporates in seconds. This initial test appears to have put Deluke in last place, but I'd chalk this one up to Deluke's long burst animation. He's such a show off, he really wants you to see that awesome animation of his. As usual, with the Regisvine showcases, I find them to be nothing more than an interesting curiosity, but it always makes for a good salad before the rest of the meal. 
Next is the child fight. Remember when Mihoyo nerfed the child fight because it was too hard? Well now we have the insane zoo of death and the abyss dudes. Anyway, let's see how the three of them do against this tusk obsessed dropping man with the name of a child. <laughs> Yanfei did fairly well here, but given Yanfei's 80 energy cost burst, I decided to conserve it for Child's third phase. As such, thanks to Yanfei's Constellation 1, my Yanfei had a much easier time managing her stamina for the first two phases of the fight. <laughs> A few seconds could have been saved in phase 3 if Child had teleported closer and if I didn't get unlucky with the crits. But as always, I'm not trying to get the best possible times in each of these scenarios. I just do a few runs and then pick the best one. <laughs> As for Diluc, this was a really smooth part 1 and part 2 child run, the best one that I've had by far. With so many crits in a row, even though my Diluc only has 77% crit rate, Diluc was able to take down both forms in a single burst infusion window. <laughs> But naturally, using his burst on the first two phases of the child boss fight slowed him down on the third phase. But thanks to his low burst energy cost, he managed to do it again. And finally, we have Klee. In terms of raw pyro damage output, Klee seems to be leagues ahead of the other two. Unlike the small differences of 3 seconds between Yanfei and Diluc, which can be accounted for by a couple lucky crits, Klee was over 11 seconds faster than the second fastest in this situation. And this put our favorite actual child in first place. <laughs> Next for the Primo Geo Vishap. Man, these earth lizards just keep getting bigger and bigger with every patch. Anyway, we're going to be fighting this no longer the largest but now simply above average sized lizard for the next damage showcase. As for Yanfei's performance here, I'm not actually sure what the optimal damage rotation is for her, but generally I try to weave two normal attacks in between each of her charged attacks. If you guys know what the actual best DPS rotation for her is, let me know. Anyway, Yanfei did admirably here and was again only a couple seconds slower than Diluc in this fight. Remember, this is a Constellation 6 Diluc that she's keeping up with.
Interestingly enough, Deluc actually has a lot of trouble hitting the Primo Geovishap sometimes. This above average sized lizard is actually very good at weaving in and out of melee attacks. It's also worth noting that Deluc has quite a bit of downtime on his pyro infusion during this fight, but thanks to the low cost of his burst, he was able to get it a second time near the end of this fight, mostly off of his own pyro particles. Nonetheless, this was still an effortless battle for Deluc. And here we go again with Klee's Rampage. Klee's sheer pyro damage output put her significantly ahead of the other two. What's interesting about this is that Klee's providing a ton of energy for her entire team. But since this is of course a solo pyro damage output showcase, that's irrelevant right now. Anyway, Klee's kit quickly incinerated our poor napping above average sized rock lizard. But I'm sure a lot of you have been wondering, what about Xing Chu? How did these characters do with him? Well, I decided to at least do this fight with Deluc and Xing Chu. So let's see how much Deluc improves with Xing Chu in this Primo Geo Vishap fight. If you include Xing Chu's casting duration, which is around three and a half seconds for his Q and two E's with the sacrificial sword, there is still a significant improvement to Deluc's time. A lot of people underestimate just how long Xing Chu takes to do his stuff. But of course, there are many situations where there's no opportunity cost in terms of time to use Xing Chu's burst. Either way, I will be using Xing Chu for both Yanfei and Deluc in Abyss 12. But for Kli, I will be using Sucrose. From my experience with Klee, it's pretty much impossible to vape most of Klee's damage if she has her Constellation 1 and if he used Klee's Burst and Jumpty Dumpties. Klee's Pyro output rate is just insane. Now since I had already collected footage from the old Abyss 12 for this video, I didn't want to go to waste. Also, I believe that the old Abyss 12 was a more accurate damage output comparison metric compared to the current Abyss 12. Given the fact that both the old Abyss 12 1 and 12 3 are basically floors with two punching bags, the old Abyss 12 was much more consistent in terms of testing each individual character's damage outputs. But don't worry, I do have a part on the new Abyss 12 later in this video. Now unfortunately, Yanfei Yanfei's damage potential drops due to her losing child in her party. Also, Klee and Deluc's damage potentials rise thanks to the Pyro Resonance. Klee especially gets a massive boost in her damage potential, since my Klee's build is really only missing attack percent, whereas Deluc has plenty of attack percent with the Wolf's Gravestone, thus making the 25% bonus attack from the Pyro Resonance much more impactful for Klee's damage potential. Anyway, let's get started and see how they do. Okay. 
In the end, Diluc with Xing Chu versus Yang Fei with Xing Chu was fairly close, especially given Yang Fei's lower damage potential. Regardless, I do think Constellation 6 Diluc is overall a bit better than Yan Fei, and I believe this can largely be attributed to Yan Fei actually does struggle to vape all her damage compared to Diluc since Yanfei still has a lot more instances of pyro damage overall. Nonetheless, this is a very admirable performance for a 4-star character compared to a Constellation 6 5-star character. As for Klee, well, she's just obliterating the competition here. This is why I focused on just raw pyro damage for her. Instead of vaping a lot of my Xing Chu's tiny sword hits, why not multiply Klee's pyro damage output with Sucrose's resistance shred? This is not to say that Xing Chu is not a good teammate for Klee. In fact, he is. But I personally just prefer pure pyro damage Klee over the heavy opportunity cost of Xing Chu's long casting times, low vape percent for Klee's damage, and also with Xing Chu, you usually have to pick poor uptime or poor damage because it's hard to have both insane energy recharge and insane damage. This is why Klee thinks Mona is the best. Klee with Mona's support obliterated my earlier Hu Tao gauntlet run, and actually every single gauntlet run out there, even Alyssa's 49.5 second Melt Gan Yu run. This Klee Mona run is in a league of its own. Hu Tao was excluded from the rest of the DPS showdown because of my previous video where she was basically two to three times faster for everything in the overworld. But this Abyss Gauntlet seriously surprised me. Klee was able to perfectly enable Mona and also cover for Mona's lack of energy in 12-2. Although most pyro characters can nuke both 12-1 and 12-3, it's Klee's ability to also hit things in Venti's Tornado that gives her the edge against the other pyro characters. 12-2 takes the loot and Yan Fei two to three times longer in comparison to Klee, even with Venti. While normally Klee's overall DPS can't compare to Hu Tao, Klee was able to outperform Hu Tao here thanks to her ability to perfectly enable Mona and her lack of a need to get beat up in 12-1 on purpose. But keep in mind, this does not prove that Klee does more pyro DPS than Hu Tao, because she actually doesn't. And it doesn't prove that Mona is the best character or anything like that. All this shows is that raw DPS isn't everything, and even for lower DPS characters like Klee when compared to Hu Tao, she happens to have the perfect combination of traits of both enabling Mona and being able to hit everything consistently in Venti's Tornado to shine here. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's see how these characters do in the current Abyss 12. First of all, I'm not going to gauntlet this entire new Abyss over and over. 12-2-1 is a complete infestation and there is no semblance of consistency to do it without Venti. But we can still see how these characters do in the all important 12-3-1. Do you remember the old 12-3-1 where both the robots simply had about 620,000 HP? Well, the new 12-3-1, these Abyss lecturers, also have around 600,000 HP and they don't mindlessly meander towards you at the beginning of the mission. But wait, that's not all. After you do 600,000 damage to each of them, then they have these ridiculously beefy elemental shields. 
And on top of all of this, this floor still has the same 3 star requirements as the previous Abyss 12. However, I did find a way to consistently group them up by smacking them with Zhongli's basic attacks and Bennett's E. Once they're together, it's time for our characters to beat them up. On top of this, we'll also see how good these characters are at breaking these Abyss dudes' elemental shields. All three of these characters were remarkably close. The vast minority of the time was actually doing damage. Most of the time was spent grouping them up and then, finally, breaking their electro shields. Frankly, there are better options than all three of these characters for breaking their shields. All three of them utilize the same strategy of grouping these Abyss Lectures together and then bursting them down with their support's abilities. <laughs> It's extremely important to knock both of them down next to each other so you can hit both of their elemental shields at the same time. I honestly don't have too much to say about each of their individual runs, but it's worth noting that I did use Bennett's Constellation 6 for a few extra overloads with the loop. It's also equally worth noting that Bennett with Thundering Fury and Shang Ling will take out their elemental shields much faster than any of these three characters can. Nonetheless, whether it's Yanfei, Deluc, or Klee being the focal point of damage as well as dealing with their elemental shields, these runs were still handily completed by all of them. And that's it everyone. This video was way longer than I expected. In the end, I think Yanfei is really good and is even able to keep up with Constellation 6 to loop with more time to grow. I believe Yanfei will continue to get better and will be an amazing 4-star DPS character for a very long time. But ultimately, I think the most important thing is for you to actually use your favorite character. Because while it's true that sure Klee does do a bit more pyro damage than the other two do, in the end all three of these characters are able to comfortably perform their roles. So what do you guys think? Do you think Yanfei is power creep in terms of 4 star characters? What do you think about the conclusion of all these tests? How do you think Yanfei held up? Thanks for watching, and thank you Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.